So let's move next into drugs that cause the gut dysfunction. This is a big one because so many people will have a, a, a GI problem, whether it's acid reflux or gas bloating, intestinal discomfort, irritable bowel. You take the trip to the doctor and what do you get? Usually you get some degree of medications to treat those particular symptoms. And sometimes you don't have gut symptoms at all. Sometimes you have joint pain or joint aches, or sometimes it's another problem like fatigue or brain fog. You go to the doctor, you get prescribed a medication to treat your symptoms, and many, many, many different types of medications can alter gut function. And so I wanna give you a synopsis here of some of those common ones. So again, organized by the area of affect here, we've got the mouth. So pain and anti-inflammatory medications can cause problems in the mouth, mainly can cause the gums to bleed. And one of the reasons why is many of these medications will deplete vitamin C, which is necessary for the formation of collagen. And so when we don't have adequate vitamin C, our collagen becomes weaker and it becomes easier or more easily damaged. And so this can lead to or contribute to bleeding of the gums. And that in and of itself, that deterioration of the gum line can lead to poor dentition over time, which is gonna affect your nutrition in the long run. So not a good, not a good combo. The next is the tongue. There are several drugs that can affect the tongue, including antacids, antibiotics, hormones, anti-inflammatories, diuretics, antiviral, blood pressure, allergy, cholesterol lowering, and antidepressant drugs, all of which have been shown to alter taste. Now, this is important for several reasons. When taste is altered, food choice changes. And we see this a lot. Um, people, when they have a reduction in their taste, they're gonna increase sweet and salty in their diets. And this is, generally this is done through processed food. So we get somebody who doesn't really taste that much. They're gonna add things to their food to taste it better or they're gonna buy more or eat more processed foods because the taste is so much stronger and they're gonna be able to actually access their taste buds for that, you know, that enjoyment aspect of eating. So these medications can affect the way you perceive taste. And so you gotta be careful if you're on them not to gravitate to this side. Next, we'll go over here to the salivary glands. Now, number of drugs, but predominantly chemotherapy drugs are major, major uh, culprits in impacting how well the salivary glands can produce saliva. And this, so this is, can cause you know, a dryness. And remember what we said uh, before, if you watch my last video on Gut Function 101, we said that, that inside that saliva there's chemicals. One of those chemicals is amylase, which helps you digest your food. So when you're not producing saliva, you actually reduce your ability to begin the chemical digestive process in the mouth. Next we have the esophagus. Pain, anti-inflammatory and antibiotics can cause pain with swallowing, which can lead to inflammation of the esophagus. We've got the stomach, chemotherapy, pain, anti-inflammatory antibiotics, acid reflux, antidepressants, and hormone medications can all destroy the lining of the stomach. This can lead to the manifestation of reflux or what people describe as reflux. And then that can lead to, unfortunately, um, antacids, which then have, as we'll talk about here in a minute, have tremendous impact on nutritional status when those are used long-term. We all see antibiotics and antacids can alter the pH of the gut. That's gonna impact absorption and digestion. It's gonna impact the way we fight infection. Remember that acid in the stomach is very, very important to defend us from microorganisms that we are eating unintentionally when we do eat our food. Okay, let's move over here to the gallbladder. Hormones and cholesterol lowering drugs can cause the formation of gallstones. Uh, so if you're taking hormone replacement therapy, ladies, this is one of those risks that comes with that as well as if you're lowering your cholesterol, uh, is, this is especially true if you're taking medicines like bile acid sequestrants, which is an older type of cholesterol medication, but it's become more popular recently because uh, a lot of people are, have become more skeptical of using statin drugs, and so they're opting more for these bile acid sequestrants, again, can increase the risk of formation of gallstones. The liver. 
So pain drugs, anti-inflammatories, cholesterol lowering, and antiviral drugs can cause liver dysfunction, mainly because the liver's the organ that has to metabolize these. So the more of these medicines you're taking, the more pressure you put on your liver. Over time, the more pressure on your liver, the harder it is to continue to do its job efficiently and effectively. Moving over to the pancreas, you've got anti-inflammatories, antiviral, and pain medications can cause indigestion and inflammation of the pancreas. One of the most common things I see in people with what we call polypharmacy, they're on multiple medicines, and they haven't really had their doctor do uh, a major kind of drug review with them. So th this is just of a keynote. If you're taking, if you're taking multiple meds, if you're on you know, three or more meds, you should talk to your doc. Or if your doc doesn't have time, talk to your pharmacist. Ask them to do an interaction review. Some drugs interfere with each other. Some drugs, when you, when you add one drug and then another drug and then another drug, they can interfere with each other. But sometimes if, there, if all of these different medicines, again, are processed in the same way by the liver, you, you, can, actually, you can actually increase the, the symptomatology or the side effect risk of some of these drugs because the liver can't keep up with the processing. So your pharmacist, your doctor should be able to do an inter interaction review with your medicines with you to make sure that you're not running into these types of problems. But again, if you don't ask, it's probably not going to happen. Usually um, doctors, uh, you know, it's just not a very common thing nowadays for doctors to sit down and spend a really long period of time discussing drug-drug interactions in, in their patients. Usually they're relying on the pharmacist to do it. But, you know, again, we've got drive-through pharmacies. A lot of people just drive through, pick up their drugs, don't even talk to the pharmacist. So again, ask. Uh, ask in case you're wondering so that you can avoid problems. Next, let's move to the small intestine. The pain medicines, the anti-inflammatories, antibiotics, and oral contraceptives can interrupt absorption and digestion. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. And then the large intestine, you've got antibiotics, antacids, pain and anti-inflammatory drugs. You see that pattern? The same classes of drugs repetitively over and over again are the ones that are impacting or affecting the function of the GI tract. And so these medicines can interfere with proper function and lead to diseases like IBS and colitis, but common symptoms are gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation can occur with the use of antibiotics and acids, laxatives, hormones, blood pressure drugs, diabetes drugs, cholesterol lowering, and antidepressant medications. Look, this is like, this is like a list of the most common drugs that the vast majority of Americans are taking. And then we look at the vast majority of these folks and we see how many people are actually having GI problems as a result of true GI problems versus as a result of drug-induced consequences of damage to the GI tract itself. I, I don't think anybody's done any real research to discern those differences, but I think it's important that you understand, especially if you're on multiple medications and you're struggling and your gut's bothering you, that, um, that you understand those medicines might be even though they might not have caused your gut problems, they could be creating gut problems or new gut problems. So as you go through the process, it becomes harder and harder to identify, you know, what began and where it began.